Eyes up, we're checking out what the night sky has in store for us this month with the great Orbax from the physics department at the University of Guelph. And you don't have to wait long because there's something special happening tonight or early tomorrow morning. That's right, there is. <laughs> That's right, tonight uh, in the wee hours of uh, this evening and into the early hours of tomorrow morning, we're gonna be seeing a total lunar eclipse. Our first total lunar eclipse visible from this region since 2022. Now, as Brian said, it's going to be beautiful clear skies tonight. So what's the best vantage point or the best time to see this eclipse? Well, so here's the thing. Uh, it's it's going to be an eclipse of the moon. So as long as you can see the moon, you're going to be OK to see this. I mean, typically when I come in here, I'm talking about meteor showers. I'm talking about stars. I'm talking about maybe planets. Those are sometimes more difficult to see with the light pollution. But as long as you've got a good, clear view of that bright moon, you're going to be able to see it. And the best time will be when it actually turns red. And that's a unique uh, event that takes place just for a lunar eclipse. And that's going to be between 2.30 and 3.30 at max at 3 a.m. Will you need any special glasses in order to observe? No, that's the great thing about a lunar eclipse, right? Because in the case of a solar eclipse, we're told not to look at a solar eclipse, not because it does anything unique, but because you're actually not supposed to stare into the sun. In the case of a lunar eclipse, we look at the full moon all the time. So when we watch it actually turn red, you can, you, I mean, you can use your unaided eye, binoculars, a telescope, anything. How common are lunar eclipses? Lunar eclipses tend to occur about twice a year, visible somewhere from Earth. In our case, that hasn't worked out since November of 2022. And this is, it's kind of a weird name, a full worm <laughs> blood moon. What, yeah, it's going to be the most ridiculous astronomical name this year that you'll hear. So. Yeah. <laughs> What's up with that? Okay, so so the full moon in March is called the worm moon, uh, typically because this time of year it starts to thaw out and the worms start to make their way to the surface, being food for the birds. Um, we call a lunar eclipse, a total lunar eclipse, a blood moon because of the color that the moon turns during a lunar eclipse. So it'll actually go red uh, for that one hour between 2.30 and 3.30. I'm going to maybe stump you with this, but does the moon actually have any kind of control over when the worms come out? I, I, not that I believe. I was going to say. Just... <laughs> as much as Mars in retrograde has any effect on the number of Instagram <laughs> posts I see, uh, I don't know. <laughs> right, what else can we expect in the night sky this month? Oh, uh, planets are always gorgeous. Jupiter is out shining in full force right now. We have the vernal, ecli or the vernal eclipse. The vernal equinox taking place on March 20th to usher in the first day of spring. Uh, all that kind of excitement take place. We're running into our season where we hopefully won't have any clouds. No, no clouds. And we'll be able to actually see our gorgeous night sky yes. and coming up on the new meteor showers that'll be taking place in the next few months. And I guess that is the risk for this time of year, a lot of rain and showers. And this is always skies. the thing. I mean, especially, I mean, I think maybe in, in Guelph we've had, I can probably count the number of them on my hand, the amount of clear night skies that we've had since November, but I'm looking forward to this. We've got a promise of clear skies that I will absolutely hold you to. And... <laughs> I'm in, I'm in trouble I know. <laughs> and I think it's a great time. It's a great opportunity for families to go out and with their with young people in their home who might be have a passing interest in STEM or in science. It's March break, a 3 a.m. pop up and outside to look at a blood red moon is a pretty exciting night. Now, you, you said the lunar eclipse is about twice a year. Yes. Uh, the, is the worm full worm blood moon also? No, I mean, it can occur. So the 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 orbit of the moon around the Earth doesn't lie in an exact plane. Uh, an eclipse takes place, the lunar eclipse takes place when the Earth gets in the way of the sun's light reflecting onto the moon and the moon's cast in the Earth's shadow. So when that moon spins around and around and around the Earth, it only kind of lines up in that specific position twice a year. And that's not on any sort of regular um, monthly occurrence, although we can predict it. Yeah. Uh, but the next one won't be taking place until co that we can see visible from here, coincidentally, next March. All right, so uh, in 20 seconds again, best time. 3 a.m. Get up, get out of bed, <laughs> go look at the sky at 3 a.m. tonight. That's it. And it's March 14th, 314. It's Pi Day. All right, perfect. Thank you very much. Lots more Morning Live coming your way. Look up. Awesome. Fantastic. Thanks very much. That was lots of fun.